Our Lord, who came among us as a servant, calls us to faith and a life of loving service to our neighbor. You stand among us as one who's called to the service of teaching the truths of God's word to the children of our congregation, which is truly a gift from God. Will you assume this ministry in the confidence that it comes from God? If so, respond, I will, and I ask God to help. Will you carry out this ministry in accordance with the teachings and practice of the Lutheran Church? If so, say, I will, and I ask God to help. Will you yourselves be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures and faithful in your use of the means of grace and in prayer? If so, respond with, I will, and I ask God to help. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to teach our children. You are commissioned by the power of the Holy Spirit and blessed by this congregation in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are commissioned by the Holy Spirit and this congregation. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit and his congregation. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Almighty and ever living God, as you have called these teachers to instruct the children of this congregation, fill them with wisdom and patience, with love and with faithfulness to your word, that they may, with gladness and each comfort, counsel, and guide our children to a spiritual maturity in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let's give them a great big So, as God is putting the tug on your heart at this time, please see one of these ladies up here, because I'm sure they're going to need help as time goes on. All right? Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much. We're excited for what you guys are doing here. Now, one more thing I've got here, Christine, is just got a few words to say, and it's going to be up here. Thank you, dear. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone that has helped with the Sunday School Project. It was really a lot of work, but everybody came together and really helped. Um, I'd like to especially thank Sandy Hollenbach, who made our wonderful, yes. awesome banner. Um, I was amazed at things I thought of, and I knew that I just didn't have time to do them myself, and I would call on people, and it was there. I'd come back to the same school and I was laying on the table. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd also like to thank Jana Hay for my, our beautiful yes. curtains. Um, I found the fabric and I did not have time to make curtains. Called her and I came the other day and they were up. So it just is amazing the things that have happened down in that Sunday school room. I'd also like to thank my wonderful husband and my sons who made, <laughs> who made the beautiful cross. I had this vision of a cross on our Sunday school wall, and it came from my own church. We had a beautiful cross in one of the youth rooms, and I thought I'd love to have that. And my husband spent a entire Saturday looking for the perfect wood for me, and they worked <laughs> diligently last Sunday, and we got it up, and it's beautiful. And I'd also like to thank everyone else who did little things that I don't even know your names. I'd come to the Sunday school room, and things would be done. The, the floor was painted yesterday. I didn't even know that was going to be done. Things were fixed. Um, I had a clock that didn't have a battery in it. I looked up, it was working. So <laughs> I really appreciate everybody that just saw things that needed to be done and did that, and I will continue to need that help and support. Um, I know that with the, with the continued support from Faith Boots Ready and from Nick, um, this Sunday School will be a huge success. Thank you. Yes. Yeah.
and all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us. Renew us and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake, forgives us all of our sins. As a call in our day ministry of the Church of Christ, the new congregations in the of Christ. And by God's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sins. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord.
Please be seated. that a gentleman 
on the church council by the name of Marshall, probably somewhere up 87, closer to 90, got up from his, his pew and sat down by Obadiah, following the words of our Lord. So each time you, you read that, you think of that. God does not seek favoritism. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? But you have insulted the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are slandering the noble name of him to whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in the scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, and then you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin, and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. And over to verse 14. What good is it, my brother, then, if a man claims to have faith, but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and gave you food. If one of you says to him, Go, I wish you well, keep warm, be well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. May God add a blessing to his word. Please rise for the reading of the Holy God. in your 
way at that time that was so great, so surprising, and so wonderful that you were just completely overwhelmed. Have you ever watched the popular TV show Extreme Makeover Home Edition? And with the show, a team of designers and construction people, and there is a huge team of people involved that we're talking about here, they tear down someone's run-down old house and build a new one in its place. How often the house that is rebuilt is to help out people in a financial or medical position who are not able to do the remodeling on their own. It's truly amazing what this crew accomplishes in just a few days. And at the very end of the show, when the project is complete and the crew is ready to unveil the finished house to the owners, the show has the owners stand across the street from the new house. And in between the owners and the newly remodeled house is a monstrous bus which blocks the owner's view so they can't see it. Remember what they make the owner say? Bus driver, move that bus! Then the bus moves and the people are overwhelmed with amazement. They're laughing and crying and running around and hugging people because they see a nice new house standing where the old rundown house used to be. So when was the last time you were overwhelmed with amazement? When was the last time you wanted to, to laugh and cry and run around and Hug someone because someone did something so great for you. This morning we see Jesus perform a miracle. And the Bible tells us that all the people were overwhelmed with amazement. Now the Greek words used here for overwhelmed with amazement are the words huber parisos ek plesso. Wow! With that mouth, mouthful, it must mean something. Special. And that it does. These words, huber parenzo sequeso, translate literally with a meaning of exceedingly astonished beyond all measure. These are the only time these words are used together in all of the New Testament. Yep, I'd say the people were overwhelmed with amazement. So let's take a good look at the second part of our scripture text for today and see how Jesus healed this deaf and mute man. Uh, as we take a close look at this passage, we're also going to see how Jesus heals us in our time of need. And my hope and prayer is that God will also fill us with an overwhelming amazement as we ponder his grace this morning. Now, Imagine having the problems this man had. Try to put yourself in his sandals for a moment. The Bible says in verse 32 that the man was deaf and could hardly talk. Imagine spending your life in silence. You can see everyone around you moving their mouths and communicating, but all you hear is nothing. You want to understand what's going on around you. You want to hear why people are laughing, crying, or, or getting excited about something. But you hear nothing. You're frustrated. And even though you are surrounded by people, you still feel isolated and alone. Our scripture passage says that this man could hardly talk. The Greek word used here is mogalabos which translates into speaking with difficulty. But more importantly, the word carries a context of something that is chained up, <coughs> bound up, and not able to move. So imagine not being able to express yourself. When you have a question, or when you need something, or when you want to tell someone what's inside of you, you can't. Nothing comes out of your mouth. Just some noises no one understands. And everyone looks at you, and they're confused, and then start to shy away from you. Once again, so very frustrating. And once again, you feel alone. 
And then, the people in your life take you to the stranger you have never met before. Verse 32 says that they begged Jesus to place his hand on the man. You have no idea who this person is, but you see that there is a crowd of people, and they're looking at you, and then they're looking at the man. So now you feel even more embarrassed and uncomfortable, and you're frightened by all the commotion that's going on around you. However, this stranger, who everyone seems to be so excited about, takes you aside and away from the crowd. That makes you feel a whole lot better already. Then, the stranger starts using a kind of sign language. You feel him put his finger into your ears. You feel him spit and place his finger upon your tongue. It seems like he's trying to say that he's going to fix your ears and fix your tongue. You see him look up to heaven and give a deep sigh. Now that you understand. Whatever is about to happen is definitely coming from God in heaven. And then Jesus speaks a word. An Aramaic word meaning be over. The powerful word of God comes out of Jesus' mouth. The same powerful word that calms storms, casts out demons, and even created the world in the beginning. And Jesus speaks that powerful word to you. Be open, the Father, to your deaf ears and your chain of tongue. And suddenly, you can hear and talk. Imagine being that man. All the things you've been trying to understand, you can now hear. All the things you've been trying to say, you can now speak. How would you feel? Verse 37 says that everyone was overwhelmed with amazement, exceedingly astonished beyond all measure. Jesus looks the same way upon all of us who are, and upon, he also looks upon the same way upon all people who are spiritually deaf and mute themselves. Jesus looks lovingly and compassionately even upon those who do not hear his truth or can't open their mouths to praise God because of the chains of sin binding their mouths and hearts. Jesus sees and knows the sin in all of us which can chain and bind us up. Jesus loved this man who in this story needed healing. And Jesus loves all of us. So he speaks those powerful words, those words of power, which can heal and break those chains of oppression in our soul. I love you. I forgive you. Back then, Jesus commanded the people to not tell anyone about this miracle. The time has not yet come for people to share the good news. Not yet. Not yet. According to Jesus' plan. But now, the time has come. Go and make disciples, Jesus says and tells us. Today, Jesus tells us to go and share with people the amazing things that our Savior has done in our lives. That is why we have the vision and mission statement that we have here at Faith Luther Mission Church. Right as you walk off the doors, about the doors out there. Sharing salvation from God our Father through his son, Jesus Christ, by word and deed, through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's our mission. May God bless you with a heart that is always amazed at God's grace and always overwhelmed by God's love. In verse 37, the people said, He has done everything well. When we think about our own lives and everything our living Lord has done and is doing for us, we also can say, He has done everything well. That makes me overwhelmed with amazement, indeed. 
Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the precious gift of your son, Jesus, who, if we only believe, comes into our lives to take away the spiritual deafness and break the chains of our bondage to sin so that we can proclaim the awesome goodness of the healing of our souls. Lord, we are overwhelmed with amazement that you would love us so much. Love us so much that you would send your one and only Son to this earth to live with us, to understand us, and then to die for us, willingly, as a sacrifice for our sins. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And it is in the holy name of your Son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Our next hymn is Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing in the Green Hymnal, number 499.
Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving, thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us all pray together the words that our Lord Jesus has taught us. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please rise if you are able for the benediction. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be gracious. May the Lord shine his face upon you and give you his everlasting strength, peace, and healing. In the name of the Father. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, we're going to release all the children and the children's ministry team to head on downstairs and start their fun. And we'll join you down there again. We'll just go sing our last song. So give them a chance to get ready and get going. My kids, have fun.